welcome to another DCS tutorial. And today I'm going to be looking at the GB38 JDAM on the F18 Hornet. Now there are plenty of other tutorials which teach you how to drop JDAMs. However, this video will hopefully help to show how you can get the most out of them. First of all, we'll look at how we can ripple all eight JDAMs as quickly as possible in a single pass. And then we'll look at how we can drop them on hard to reach targets. So let's make a start. The first thing we're going to do is to turn on our teapot as that takes a few minutes to warm up. In this first scenario we have eight parked aircraft that we need to take out and they are defended by an SA-3 SAM system. Next we're going to go into air to ground mode and then bring up the T-Pod on the right MFD. And in this case I'm using the AT Flur, though the procedure is just the same for the Lightning. Now let's bring up the JDAMs on the left MFD and we're going to set the fuse into instantaneous and this will apply to all bombs on all stations. We now need to set each station from pre-planned to target of opportunity and this has to happen on all four stations. So once you do the first we just need to hit step and then change the next one and so on until all four stations are set. Once done it's probably wise to cycle through each just to make sure it's been set correctly. Now we need to wait for the AT flare to come online so let's just skip forward a little bit. Okay the T-Pod's now warmed up so I'm going to slow it to our target location and try and find our targets. I'm going to switch to IR mode as it's generally easier to find targets with, especially at long range and of course at night. And there they are. However, the Hornets pod is one of the worst in DCS, so we're going to have to get much closer. So, let's jump forward again. We're a bit closer now, so let's start by selecting the JDAM display and I'm going to set the release type to manual. And now we can select mission. Now we can slew the T-Pod over the first of our targets and press TDC action. This will lock the coordinates which you can see on the mission page. Now we need to switch to target of opportunity 2 and do the same for the next target. This will mean that station 8 in this case has two bombs with coordinates programmed to each one. Next we press step which moves us to station 2 and we do exactly the same with the next two targets. And we repeat again for station 7. And finally station 3. So we now have 8 targets of opportunity in total, 2 per wing station. We just need to fly towards the target and once in range we can drop the first 4 bombs.
We're approaching our drop zone, but I prefer to wait a few seconds just to make sure that the bombs have enough energy to reach their target. We also need to be mindful that not all targets might be in range at the same time. Okay, we're in range now. And three, two, one. Pickle, 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 pickle. Okay, that's four away. Uh, now let's take a quick pause. If we pickle the remaining four bombs now, they'll all go to the same four targets, which in this case are target of opportunity two on each station. So what we need to do is switch each station to its alternate target of opportunity. And so this takes a couple of seconds longer. Let's resume the mission and target one, pickle, target one, pickle, target one, pickle, target one, pickle. And that's now all eight JDAMs away. Just in time as well, as that SA-3 has launched its missile at me, I have ample time to evade and then we can watch our JDAMs hit home. There's a smoke trial, and that missile has zero chance of catching me, due to the fact that we got our bombs off so quickly. And that's all eight targets hit successfully. Let's now look at how we can hit some tricky targets, such as this technical which is tucked away between some buildings, making it largely immune to normal attacks. What we can do with the JDAM is to program them to drop at different headings and angles. The angle is by far the easiest to use, and here we could drop at 90 degrees and the bomb would descend vertically down and destroy the target. This of course reduces the range that the bomb can be dropped from, because the bomb won't follow an ideal ballistic trajectory. The other option is to attack from a specific heading, and this can have a much wider effect on the range, as the bomb might only need to move a few degrees, but it could potentially do a lot more, and that would drastically affect range. So we've found a technical, so let's assign that as a target, just as we did previously. As we're going to attack this using a heading, with the intention of the bomb coming between these buildings, we need to estimate that heading. And it appears to be between 300 and 310 degrees. And that's why it's usually preferable to drop using a steep angle as there is no need to calculate the heading. To assign the parameters we need to press T or UFC 
which is push button 14. And now we have options to set the heading and angle on the UFC. Pressing push button 3 lets us enter the angle. And as I mentioned earlier, I would normally use 90 degrees for this target. So to do that, we enter 90 and then enter. However, here I'm going to use a shallow angle of 35 degrees and the heading that we estimated earlier between 300 and 310 degrees. Once done, just confirm that your parameters are entered correctly by looking at the MFD. Now we just need to start our attack run, so let's skip forward. OK, we're now ingressing from the east, and as you can see, we're around 20 degrees off the attack vector of the JDAM. We're already in range, so pickle and bombs away. And now you can see the JDAM starting to turn on to its final vector. And shack. That's all for today's video. So thank you for watching. And if you've learned anything, then please do hit like and subscribe. All we need to do now is return the toy to the toy store.
course, if you really want to drop chair dams effectively, forget the toy store and get a proper weapon, like the Harrier.